Hello everyone, it is Ebontis, and in this video I first want to cover what Returnal is without giving too much away, and then give you some tips about starting out and without doing too many spoilers of anything, give you some basics of understanding of some mechanics, currencies, and a little bit so you can get started. So here we go. First thing to know, what is Returnal? Returnal is a Metroidvania roguelite sci-fi third person shooter. I know that's a lot of things, but that is the best way I can describe it. Metroidvania because you're going to be unlocking like abilities or mechanics that let you traverse to different parts of levels you couldn't before. A rogue light because you will have deaths that wipe most of your progress through a specific run, but you will have a few things that do carry forward, just not much. Sci-fi, 100% sci-fi like picture Alien, Prometheus, Fifth Element, Stargate, you're talking about all that type of stuff. And of course, a third person shooter, that one's pretty obvious. So that is what Returnal is in a keyword nutshell. Now here's a couple tips to help you get started, but I can tell you this game is not easy. It is going to challenge you, you are going to have some painful deaths, there may be some frustration if you get far into a run and wipe, but that is what these games are like. And that really is tip number one, you will die just gonna happen. Uh, that's okay though. Part of that is gonna be like your learning experiences. Part of it is gonna be so you get a fresh run at the next world. Um, it's gonna be okay. The cool thing about this game is I've been so hooked on it so far, so far even if I die, I just wanna keep going. I literally just wanna pick it back up, get going, take what I learned, try and be a little bit better, find a good weapon, all that type of stuff. So one, you are gonna die a lot and that's part of it. The next thing to talk about is basics of mobility. You have a small jump if you tap the jump button. You have a bigger jump if you hold the jump button. You have a small dash if you tap it. And you have a big dash if you hold it. Just for reference, you guys can see if I go sideways, it's a little dash between these rocks. But if I hold it, it's about twice as far. So small tap versus big hold on both jump and dash. One quick FYI, if you do fall off a ledge, it's not going to fully wipe your run. It's just going to take a chunk of your health. Bit dramatic on the sound, which will be right back where you were and you'll lose a chunk of your health. So just so you're aware, if you do fall in a hole, it's not complete game over. Unless you're very low on health, and then it will be. As for the map, it's fantastic. Your minimap down below will go with your camera. But if you even zoom out, you can see... It's a full legitimate 3D map and it's going to tell you a lot of information. You can see the types of doors for main paths, side quests. You can see where your ship is at. You've got different devices. And even the mini map down below, when there are items on the ground, you're going to be able to see if there's a healing type of item. You're going to see if there's like an artifact type pickup. Look at the mini map. Use it. The game's actually not trying to hide that much from you. There's not a ton of secrets that you need to go like you know shoot a secret wall there's a couple of those i've seen but overall use the map it's got a lot of information enemy locations as well as like pickups that you may not visually see but if you you know kind of roam around to a different angle you'll probably find it so use that map it's amazingly helpful speaking of combat we've got a couple things uh the left trigger is how you're gonna go aim down sights and it's only a half pull so they're using the adaptive triggers um, and you can feel a little bit of resistance halfway through, and that's how you're going to get aim down sights. You've got your regular fire that you can do, but if you aim down sights, obviously a little bit more focus to that fire. And the game also comes with an auto aim. It's going to be okay if you leave it on. The reason I say that is because I've been playing through, and I finally checked, it's on medium for me. There's enough going on between your mobility, jumping, doing everything else in this game. The auto aim on medium is not going to make the game easy. High might make it a little easier. Low and off is probably just making it a little harder than it needs to be. The first time you play through this whole thing, play it on medium, you'll probably be fine. That being said, there's a little more to combat than just shooting. So you have the half trigger pull for ADS. Well, when you push through or basically pull through that halfway, you get into the alternate fire mode. And that alternate fire mode is different for each weapon. Now the weapon I've got right now, if you go to um, your inventory screen, which I'll get back to in a second, it's a void beam, and it'll actually tell you what the alternate fire is. I can have a pistol that has an alternate fire, and I can go find another pistol that has a different one. But make sure you... That's the halfway. That's the hole. And then you're going to be able to use whatever that ability is. And then it's got a recharge time. Bottom left corner, you can see right next to, like, the couple bars down there, you can see it slowly filling up for that alt fire. You can hear that trickling sound in the background. 
And then when it gets fully charged, you're gonna get three things, an audio ping, a visual kind of proc on screen, and also your hands are gonna get a very specific vibrate that your alternate fire is ready. The alt fire is very powerful, so it's very good to know when it's ready. So we're almost up, I'm literally talking through, so I'm gonna shut up so you guys can hear what it looks like and sounds like when it tings. All three, visual, audio, and then in my hands you could feel it. So that's the alternate fire and the basics of your weapons. The game does have an active reload feature. So if you sit here and fire, the pistol has semi-automatic that you can pull a little faster, and you don't use the full clip and then let it go for a little bit, it'll just recharge. There's no ammo quantity in this game. It's basically considered mostly energy. But if I sit here and fire all the way through, you'll see we've got an active reload system is most you know, freak recent place I saw it was in Gears of War. If you hit the reload button, it's the same button if you hit the trigger. So if I fire through, and then if I hit it in the middle, it gives me the quick reload. If I miss it, then obviously I gotta go for the full time. That one was a little short. And that one counted it. So active reload is there, and there's something that will make that a little bit easier, which I'll cover here in just a second. There's one ability I am gonna show you and it is your melee sword that you're gonna find in the first biome. Now, I can't tell you where you're gonna find it because each time you die and you come back into the world, it is gonna be different. That being said, as you go through, it is something you're gonna need pretty early on. So it's something you wanna look for, especially before you try and fight the first boss. And it looks like this. Now, anytime you see a red energy look to either an enemy with a shield or say a wall of vines that has energy on it, you have to use that melee sword to break through it. So if there's an enemy with a red shield, you're not gonna be able to kill it if you don't have the sword, so skip it. If you see a wall of vines over a wall and it's red, you need the sword to break through and there's usually something behind there. So as for the Metroidvania style, this is the very first ability you get. There are others you're gonna get and I don't wanna spoil those cause I don't even have anything else yet, but I know what at least one of them is. That being said, the melee you're going to want to find, and it's actually fairly powerful in combat, so don't forget about it if enemies are up close to you. It's actually pretty potent between both killing small enemies and staggering big ones. Just to give you a quick example of what the melee stuff looks like, so if you see these vines that are red like this, these are what you can use the melee to break, and then you'll usually have something sitting behind it. For me, this is a piece of um, the Silphium, which is gonna help repair my suit and give me more health. But that's the red look. Same thing if you see a, like a red shield on an enemy, you need the sword to break it. So find the sword early, it's kind of an important piece. So remember when I told you there are enemies with red shields on them? This is a prime example where you have to use the melee to be able to damage these enemies. But they can also not be alone, so gotta play careful. And remember, if these things drop on the ground, make sure you run over them to pick them up. But usually what you're gonna wanna do is use your dash, and your dash does have invincibility to it. So, as you dash through, I'm able to get closer, go through the projectiles, and then use that melee to kill it. I cannot touch that guy without that melee, so again, if you see an enemy like that, just run away and skip it. All right, so now let's talk about your status screen. You've got quite a bit of information here, so let's talk about it. First, in the bottom left corner, we're gonna go through the very bottom left and then we'll work on currencies. So you've got integrity, which is your health bar, which you guys can see the green health, I'm currently at 76%. Integrity is also something that it can be upgraded. You can have a bigger health bar. You could theoretically have almost two full health bars if you find enough things in the world and in a very long run, let you upgrade your health bar to be that long. So the green bar right now, that's about three quarters full. That is my current health. And then the little three boxes next to the glowing green health bar, those are how you level up your integrity to increase the distance, the um, length of the health bar to like 105, 110, 115%. You need to find three things that improve integrity. And that stuff is called Silphium. If I'm saying that right, I don't know. And it's called Silphium Resin. There's two green looking healing items you'll find. One is Silphium, Silphium, and that will just heal you. And then there's a Silphium Resin. Every three of those you find, you will increase your total integrity bar for your suit. So that is integrity, which is basically your health. 
Second thing we've got is proficiency, and that is related to your weapons. Your weapons will start at a proficiency of zero. My sidearm, big old goose egg, zero. They all start that way, but as you go through and use your guns, you're going to improve your efficiency, uh, proficiency of your character as you go through. Some of that's going to be by getting kills, and then part of that increase can come from finding certain items, and those will increase your proficiency in chunks as opposed to just gradually doing it while you use the weapon. The higher your proficiency, the higher your weapons at can drop. So if I have a proficiency of two, theoretically, if I found another sidearm, it's going to fill in two of the boxes in the middle section where you see bonus damage, overload projectiles, and fire rate. If I have a sidearm of you know proficiency level two, then maybe I have two of the boxes in bonus damage filled, so therefore I have plus two bonus damage, or I could have plus two fire rate, or one and one. You can have a proficiency up to, I think, almost 30, if I think I've seen correctly from Twitter. So you can have a pistol at, like, level 30 that would be substantially, you know, night and day different from your first pistol. So proficiency is all about your weapons and how upgraded they will be once they drop. So... That's the big thing about proficiency. The higher it is, the higher your future drops of weapons are going to be. The third is adrenaline. Now, adrenaline right now for me is zero. So let me go through and kill a couple enemies and get that a little bit higher. All right. So now we've got a couple of changes on the screen after I killed a few enemies. So you can see I took a little bit of a health shot there. So my integrity is a little bit lower. My proficiency has gone up by, you know, maybe a fifth of a full level by killing a few enemies, and also my adrenaline is at 1.3. The way adrenaline works is every three enemies that you kill without taking any damage, you're going to go up a rank, and each rank has a bonus. The first one is probably the easiest to show you guys, and that one is your active reload. So you'll notice the active reload is a much, much wider bar once I'm at level one. And you'll also notice as I'm at level one for adrenaline, every bullet I fire, pretty frequently at least, is going to have a secondary bullet that travels with it. That's got some tracking to it. And if I'm at level five, there's a lot of those that fire out every so often the cooldown's up, which is, you know, it's pretty quick. Every second or so, something like that. But every level, you'll have more of those bullets also that fire. Level two is enhanced vision. I'm going to show a picture on screen so you guys can actually see. You'll be able to see enemies through walls and they show up as these little red faint rings, but you're at least going to be able to see where things are. As movement gets to be a bit chaotic in some arenas, this is not a bad thing to have. This is an example of what it looks like to be able to see through walls as well. So this is what you guys can see. There's two enemies behind these walls. Once you can see them, they'll peek out. But if they hide behind the walls, this is adrenaline level two, just to be clear. Same thing, you've got that one enemy over there. I can still see him out there with that little red glowing pulse wave. The third one is an enhanced melee attack. To my understanding, it just shortens down the cooldown of your melee attack so you can use it more frequently. You can see that blade down there in the bottom left has a little bit of a recharge time, but it's not that long. In level three of adrenaline will make that a little bit shorter. Just a quick side note here, I did get up to adrenaline level three, so my melee cooldown is just a little bit quicker. I don't think it's any stronger, but I know it's a little bit quicker once you get to adrenaline level three. So this is just so you guys can see it. I might even put them side by side since I've got frame by frame now. So we'll have to see what these two look like right next to each other. Probably not that much of a difference, but it might be slightly faster. Level four is proficiency rate. It's just going to go up 50% faster if you're at adrenaline level four. And then one of the currencies, the basic one, is going to drop 50% more from enemies at level five. So those are your five adrenaline levels. One, easier active reload. Two, the scene through walls for better vision. Three, shorter melee cooldown. Four, proficiency plus 50%. And then the level five is the currency drop obelite at plus 50%. So now seems like a good time to talk about currencies as well. So the first one is obelites. Those are basically like your money. Enemies are gonna drop them. You're gonna find them in chunks in the world. Um, smaller chunks you can pick up, bigger chunks you will need the melee sword to break, but as I said, it's one of the first abilities you find, so you'll have that one fairly quickly. And that's what you use at different, like, I'll call them kiosks or things. There's not really NPCs, because you're basically by yourself so far, but you've got these little alien things that you can deposit a certain amount of obelites into and buy different buffs or buy different consumables. So that is basically your currency of money. If you die, that is completely wiped out, so it is a non-permanent currency. 
The second one is keys. Keys are also non-permanent. You'll use those to open specific chests and certain doors. Their chests are usually going to be holding weapons, um, and those could be, you know, slightly higher than your proficiency level. And then doors are going to be like a group of enemies, maybe a mini boss in there, a wave that's going to have a chance at some decent drops. So keys are something good to have, not completely crucial usually, because you're able to go through most of the story without them. But if you want to do a bunch of side objectives, keys are good to have. Third currency is Ether. That is actually permanent, but you don't get a lot of it. I've been playing for about six hours-ish, maybe seven, depending on how long this recording takes. And I have 24. And I've used some, but I have not used as many. Uh, there are certain things you can do with Ether, which I'll show you guys later on. There's something at your starting point, which you can use it for. But it's not very frequent you get to get a lot of it. So just be very stingy where you use it. And there's certain things that I'll show you guys where... You could use it, but you may as well save it for later on. So Ether, be a little picky where you use it. Probably better to use that in later runs or longer runs. Early on, try and stockpile a little of that. It's going to serve you better. You don't need that to like beat the first boss or anything. You could skip enough stuff and still be okay. So those are the main three currencies. Obelites, basically your money. Keys for chest and doors. And Ether for bigger purchases and stuff I'll explain a little bit later, you just don't have much of it. Ether is the only permanent one, obelites and keys, non-permanent, they're wiped every time you die. On the right, you'll also notice stats. You've got weapon damage, which can be increased with different pickups and consumables that you can use. Protection, which is going to reduce damage. Proficiency rate, minus standard, but, you know, I can have that increased just by being at adrenaline level 4, much less other things. And your alt fire cooldown, you can have that increased or reduced, depending on other things as well. You've also got certain things that are going to be permanent. Um, very early on, you'll un unlock something that allows you to have an alt fire to weapons, and then it's just good to go. I've also got access to translocators. This is a very early thing that you'll find. This is a key to a house, which I'm not going to really explain. You guys will see that one. And then when you beat the first boss, you will get a key that allows you to no longer have to fight that boss to continue forward um, into the next biome and further into the game. So once you beat a boss once, you technically never have to face it again. There's a benefit to doing that, which I could cover in a separate, like, more advanced video. But for now, once you beat a boss, you theoretically don't have to do it over and over and over. These are consumables, one of the other random things that you're going to find, and they're exactly that. They're a one-time use item. So this here, as you can see, disables all turrets within an area. Now, this would have been useful if I didn't have the melee, but what you'll basically do is pick it up. Now, I have two slots down there because I got to the second biome. It's basically when you'll get your second one, but you can use those, and it's a pretty easy, basically, trigger pull on the left button, and you'll use what you've got. There's a lot of different options for those, and you can mix and match them uh, or swap them out if you find a new one. So consumables, very helpful. Um, can do some pretty cool stuff. This is a parasite. Now, parasites are always going to have a give and a take to them, so be very careful what you choose to pick up. You can have multiple. You can have them all over your body, I'm probably pretty sure, later on. All they do is just to attach to a part of your suit. But they always have a plus and a minus. So this one, for example, fixes or prevents one malfunction, which I'll get to here in a second when I talk about uh, malignancy and it will detach afterwards. But if I have this on, I suffer damage from long falls. Now you don't fall that often, but I literally just fell coming into this room. If you have one of those false floors that I either talked about earlier or we'll talk about later, that one would hurt you. So it's a toss up. Do you want to prevent a malfunction, but take some damage on a long fall? Always gonna have a give and take. It's really up to you and your play style if you think it's worth it. Also remember when I spoke about the currency obelites? This is one of the larger structures. There are smaller versions of this. You actually need to melee it with the sword to break these. Until you have the sword, you won't be able to bust these. But I got 51 out of that, so they're a good thing to be able to break. So if you see those, you need to break them. The little ones you can just walk over and pick up. The little obelites on the ground are a temporary thing. So if you see the ones on the ground and you're able to get to them, run over them because they don't last that long. Just keep that in mind. I do want to call these out to you guys because I don't want this to frustrate you at a part in your run. If you ever see this on a floor, so you'll notice a very kind of intentional little square, and you'll see this little yellow guy floating on the ground. What this is is a false floor. You will fall through. Now, sometimes there are good things in there. Sometimes it's chest. You can pick stuff up. Sometimes it's just a very small arena with some pillars where you fight a big, powerful enemy. So, I don't want to spoil what's down there or show you guys what it is, but my advice, if you're on a decent run and you're getting ready to go for a boss and you cross one of these, 
maybe skip it because the little buff that might be in there probably isn't worth it versus the risk of trying to lose half your health trying to fight a tough enemy. So basically enter these pits at your own risk. There's some benefit to them, but you definitely can also fight some tough guys in there. Just wanted to call them out so you know. There are also two types of teleporting. The proximity translocator will take you to another one that's very close by. And there's another one for tra fast travel I'll show you here in a second. But this is what this one looks like. So this is the fast travel system. If you see these translocators, you can go ahead and use them and you can pick where you want to get to. I've only got one option, but the more you explore in a level, the more you'll be able to fast travel between and you literally just can warp between these two points. Pretty cool system if you like know there's something like back here. If I did want, as I told you, the um, thing where I make a copy of myself to save it, I could actually go back to the reconstructor and then head to a boss fight, but I could at least fast travel there, fast travel back and have to waste less time walking around. So. That is fast travel, pretty straightforward. You'll unlock more of these pieces as you go. This is something you're likely gonna come across on the first biome, and it's something I would tell you to not use because you're gonna be wasting ether this early into the game. What this does is basically make a copy of you kind of where you're at. I don't know how much any of the currencies it's gonna save, but if you die, you will come back to this reconstructor, kind of at the point where you made your copy. And it would allow you basically to say you're in like the third biome or something and you're pretty much ready and you want to go face the boss. Well, if you go to this thing, you at least have a chance to have a second attempt at that boss without having a full wipe. So basically it will give you a second chance within a biome. You do not need to use this in the first area, probably not even the second. Only use your ether on something like this when you're farther into the game. So I just wanted to let you guys know what it does, but also to make sure you don't waste ether on it early on. I did that, again, wasted some ether, but you guys will learn from my mistakes. Also remember when I said this is a Metroidvania, I don't have the ability or tool to get up to that yet. Later on I will. So if you see these in the first biome, you can't mess with them until you get a tool later on. So ignore them until you get the thing that uses them. I won't say that because I don't have it yet, but I know what it is, so I just don't want to spoil it. This is the Fabricator. You're always going to have usually a selection of like four items that you can pick from. They all have different purposes. They all have different costs. And it's up to you and where you want to spend your obelites. But remember, early on, you could easily die and lose your obelites. So sometimes it may as well, you may as well spend some so you have an ability to stay alive as opposed to wiping and not having bought anything. So early on, every so often, it's totally fine to spend them. You're going to get more. You're going to go on more, you know, runs after you die. Have some fun, spend the currencies, don't be like me, don't be a hoarder. All right, I just wanted to show you guys this. Basically, if you ever see this big green glowing pulse like that, it means you have to kill like an obelisk that is causing that effect before you do anything else. Because basically what that's doing is healing the enemies in that arena and you can't kill them until that dies. So I'm gonna go kill that. Hopefully I can find some malignancy and then we'll wrap this thing up. Also, just a small FYI, the little red beams of light on the ground are gonna be new weapons that you find. And as you can see, this is a new weapon because it's got a proficiency level of one and it has bonus damage. That's one. So that's this trait that this one specifically got. So that's the difference between proficiency level zero and proficiency level one. This is one of the last things that I do want to show you, and it's malignant or malignancy. Basically, you'll have certain items, whether it be keys, whether it be obelite chunks, which are the currency, or it could be a chest. Um, they all can have this look to them. Now... You can see I've got a couple of options here. I can just hold triangle to pick it up, or I can cleanse it with ether. If I cleanse it, it's a safe pickup, but it also costs six ether and I have 21, so it's expensive. And it's just a key, so I'm not really gonna do this because I already have a key. But whatever item it is on, you may really want that thing. It comes with a risk. Now you can see the malfunction probability is high. What that means is it's gonna cause some malfunction on my suit, and I've seen a lot of different ones to where I can't pick up a weapon. Um, if I'm not moving, I do 85% less damage. Some are good, some are bad, but you also can fix them. So let's pick this one up, see what happens. Perfect, so I got one. So you can see now that my dash cooldown, it takes a long time till I can use it again. Two and a half seconds. So it increases the cooldown by a lot. Now, how do I get rid of that? You are able to, and you can see below, if I open two containers, wherever I find them, then my dash cooldown will be back to normal. I still have the key, that's not gonna go away, or the obelites if I pick those up or whatever came from it, but if you risk something that has the malignancy, 
you risk a malfunction on your suit and you have to fix it. Now, those consumables in the bottom left-hand corner, there is one that clears all of those, so that's a nice one to have on, on hand and you can use it. But if I keep proceeding, I have to deal with this pretty much nonstop. And with a nice death of my own, that is a good place to wrap up this video. So as I said, you will die a lot, but the game is so far really freaking cool. Um, there's some progression that you'll make with bigger unlocks. You're going to get some complete wipes, and that's how it's going to go. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found the tips helpful. If you did, drop a like below. If you got comments or questions, drop those below. There's plenty of people who may know answers that I don't. I'll answer stuff if I do. And as for you guys, if you're new to the channel and you want to see more content from me just in general, hit, a, hit that subscribe button. It's a nice way to help support the channel. And if you want to see future stuff, you can hit that alert bell as well. You guys can also find me over on Twitter, twitter.com slash and then Twitch, streaming this Destiny and anything else that I stream, twitch.tv slash Thank you all very much. Good luck out there. And um, you're going to die a lot. But trust me, I've already died a lot too, and there's many more to go. So have fun. I'll see you soon.